round, and either the referee or the doctor can stop the fight. For the official introductions, here's Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. We have a big night of action in store for you and it's all brought to you by Don King Productions and main events in association with AEG and the Staples Center. Our first title attraction, ladies and gentlemen, is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association. President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor George Martinez, along with the California State Athletic Commission, the executive officer is Armando Garcia. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring the bout from ringside, from Chula Vista, California, Jose Cobian, from West Covina, California, Marty Denkin, and from Valencia, California, Jack Reese. And our third man in the ring, our referee in charge, Raul Caiz, Jr. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBA Intercontinental Super Welterweight Championship. Introducing to you first on my right, he is fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trunks with blue trim, hailing from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. He weighed in at the super welterweight limit of 154 pounds. With a hard-hitting record of 25 wins, two losses, he has 24 wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome the two-time WBA super welterweight champion of the world, Alejandro Terra Garcia. And his opponent across the ring on my left. He is fighting out of the red corner in this 12 round vacant championship bout, wearing black trunks, fighting out of Los Angeles by way of Kuznetsk, Russia. He weighed in at already 152 and three quarter pounds. His record 35 wins, two losses, one draw, and one no decision, with 22 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former IBF junior middleweight champion of the world, Roman Made in Hell, Karmazin. Once again, a referee in charge, Raul Caiz Jr., now to give instructions. Mouthpiece. Can you please put it in? Mouthpiece, protector. All right, gentlemen, you received the instructions in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Que recibieron las instrucciones abajo. Quiero una pelea limpia, okay? Digo, punches are here on the Pakistan los golpes legales. Take a good look. Toca guante bueno suerte los dos. Good luck to both of you. Despite the fact that he is only 28 years old, Alejandro Terra Garcia meets a crossroads against this man who is 35, but considered still very much a strong contender and right in the midst of things. For Garcia, Ready? however, it's trying to Lisa. climb back in to the midst of things. Round one, scheduled for 12. Tara Garcia in the white. Roman Karmazin in the black. Roman Karmazin, who grew up under the tough conditions of the old Soviet Union. He said, you wore the clothes you were given. You ate what you could eat. It'll be an interesting battle of wills here in the early going is to see who can establish the style that they want and who can move the other man back. Karmazin is a strong fighter who likes naturally to come forward and move his opponent back, which he's doing right here. But according to Tara Garcia, who we talked to yesterday, he said his style was going to be, it has been, it was going to be tonight, attack, attack, attack. Roman opens up with two right hands, landed to the body well here in the opening minute, and that body shot puts down Garcia, so a knockdown scored early. It was a left hook. Garcia, as he went down, was claiming it was a low blow. Raul Caiz Jr. said, no, that's a legitimate knockdown. And that's got to immediately bring back bad memories of that last fight against Rivera, Joe. We talked about it. He was put down five times against Jose Rivera. What happens in the mind of a fighter when they've been beaten and damaged the next time they go in the ring is critical. How they respond, those dark, shadowy places that they allow themselves to go to, will they return there? Stop! Three. Three. Get ready, baby. 
Carmen Zen had actually been around for quite a while, but he really burst into everyone's mainstream consciousness in the boxing world with a fairly spectacular victory, an upset victory over Kasim Oma. And it was that showing which really put him on the map and led many to believe that he would uh, take apart Corey Spinks when they fought. But he had trouble dealing with the style of Spinks when they fought and really didn't catch on to Spinks until about the, the seventh round. And by then, he was already considerably behind. And although he rallied furiously at the end, he still ended up losing a close fight to Corey Spinks. Lost that majority decision back in July of 2006. The stunning upset against Uma was in July of 2005. He scored two knockdowns in the third round and went on to win a unanimous decision in that upset of the then IBF junior middleweight champion. Carmazan appears to be punching sharply to me in this first round, Joe. Went to the body well with two right hands, and then it was the left hand to the body that scored the knockdown in the opening minute of this opening stanza. Good right hand by Garcia. So each man scores well here in this opening round. But the knockdown scored in the ledger of the Russian. Freddie Roach with Roman Karmazin. Don't get careless. Okay. He's lunging, he's lunging in. On the point to that, the one she looked in the hook in the uppercut. And my hook, both points, but on uppercut. All right, let's take a look now. There's a good right hand by Tara Garcia, who you can see already is a strong puncher. He's a heavy handed guy, but it was the heavy hands of Roman Carmazan that recorded the first knockdown of the fight. Garcia with that lead right hand. It was Carmazan, though, who landed the left hook. Well, we had three shots of that right by Garcia, but nonetheless, it was the left hand and a body punch. And now the question being, was that a 10-9 or 10-8 round? I say you have to go with a 10-8 because it was called a knockdown by Caiz, even though Garcia claimed it was a low blow. And, you know, in my opinion, Joe, it's a knockdown is a major event during the course of a fight. But, Rich, a knockdown isn't necessarily a 10-8 round. No, it's not. And uh, you don't have to score it that way. But in my opinion... He still scored that round, and that knockdown is a 10-8. No doubt about it. Not in my mind. In Rich's mind, of course, many would point to the right hand as another whistling one comes in by Garcia. Early knockdown scored by Carmazan with a left hook to the body. Just 45 seconds into this fight. Says he's inspired by his... Russian amateur trainer who passed away before he won the title. Now he's under the tutelage of Freddie Roach at the Wild Card Gym here in L.A. He's not sensational, but he is steady. Ring Magazine has Carmazin ranked number two among the best 154 pounders in the world. That's a division that is taking on a little bit of a transformation with some spray-painted champions, Joe Alshim Alcine up in no, Montreal, Rick, Vernon Forrest back in the mix. Of course, Corey Spinks took the IBF crown from Carmazan. And you know, when, after the fight, though, Spinks said, that's the strongest man I've ever fought. He's got to be the strongest 154-pounder alive. Well, just to look at him and to see his physical stature and his build, I mean, he packs as much on 154 of a frame as you can. Yeah. On the other hand, as you look at Alejandro Terra Garcia, he, he looks a little bit soft not ripped in the same fashion that Carmazan is physically. That doesn't always tell the story, though. Garcia with his head down, trying to bull rush his way in behind two left hands. Terry Garcia is the man who a couple of years ago suffered that defeat to Travis Sims. He was knocked out in that fight in a very unusual circumstance. The referee ordered him, uh, was calling for a break. Garcia dropped his hands, momentarily stepped back, uh, thought that the break was called, and the referee seemed to change his mind, and Travis Sims just unloaded a shot on him and knocked him down and knocked him out with that, and he went against the basic 
tenet of boxing that every fighter is told, which is protect yourself at all times. He didn't in that case, and he ended up losing his championship because of it. That happened midway through the fifth round of their December 2003 fight in Atlantic City. Ten seconds, ten seconds. And Garcia made the comment that it was just devastating to his career. And just moments ago, here at the Staples Center, 29-year-old Fernando Vargas, flanked by his family, has arrived. He says this is the last time this will ever happen in his sensational career. Two-time junior middleweight titleist who is in this heated war of words with Ricardo Mayorga now for months. And now it all comes to an end tonight. He can't handle your hand speed. Armazen and Tara Garcia ready themselves for round number three, scheduled for 12. If you're wondering, where he picked up that nickname, Tara. He told us when he was a little kid, he used to eat dirt. Started calling him Tara. <laughs> Two good nicknames. Made in hell, because as Carmazan says, I'm a product of hell. One of the interesting things about his background, he said when he moved to a small town to St. Petersburg in uh, Russia, that one of the main industries there was, <laughs> frankly, crime. And he said he was nearly forced and he's under a lot of heavy-handed pressure to join a crime syndicate to the point once where they sent 20 or 25 guys to try to influence him i guess you could say yeah. to uh, join them and the syndicate he said he got a few of those guys into the ring and knocked out every one of them after which they kind of stood back and said well maybe he's doing the right thing being a fighter comes in behind the jab trying to place the right hand Garcia flies with a right hand in the zone. Remember, he scored well at the end of the first round with it. Good combination, and it scores the second knockdown of the night for Carmazan. What a shot! He's not going to make. He's not going to get up, Joe. He's finished. Wow! Statement made, Roman Carmazan. A tremendous combination thrown with leverage, with power, with speed. It had everything. And Alejandro Terra Garcia went down. You could just see the pain on him. And you could see midway through the count, he was not even going to be able to make an effort to get up. In fact, he still has not gotten up. As devastating a combination with body work as you will see. Hard, thudding shots that make a crisp and clean ending to this fight. You can see that Garcia has made it to his stool, but just moments ago, he crumbled in pain. Let's take a look back. As Roman Carmazan was able to cap his night in style, as solid of a knockout victory as he's ever had. Well, you won't have to argue about whether this is a 10-9 or 10-8 round. Take a look at that four-punch combination. He went both body and head, Joe, and it was just all crisp punches. Love that left hook to the body there and the overhand right that followed. Great combination. Many people do not associate speed of hand with Carmison, but look how he threw that. Four punches coming in rapid succession. A tremendous left combination. Left hook, short right hand, left hook, right hand over the top. Exit. I See think, ya. I think that that left hook to the body did as much damage even maybe as that final punch. Watch that left hook to the body, and there you see the overhand right. And you can spell that one K.O., baby. Raul Caiz Jr. waves it off. And the Russian native dismisses Tara Garcia. 
36th win of his career, 23rd knockout of his career. The former junior middleweight titleist letting it be known that he is very much still a player at this 154 pound limit. For the official particulars, we send it to the ring to Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, 24 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, Raul Kais Jr. reaches the count of 10. He is the winner by way of knockout. He is the new WBA Intercontinental Super Welterweight Champion, Roman Maidenhell Carmazin. Yeah, yeah, yeah.